Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to do a video for those people who are worried about having a heart attack. Okay, it is not infrequent that I see patients in my clinic who come to see me because either a loved one has died of a heart attack or a friend has died of a heart attack or they have a family history of heart disease and they come to me and they say, look, you know, I've got this family history, I'm really concerned about it, can you do something, I want to get checked out. And uh, <clears throat> I thought I'd do this video to try and explain my thought process and um, <clears throat> what I say to them, all right? So, uh, the first thing to understand is what is a heart attack? A heart attack is when part of the heart muscle, the heart is a muscle, all right? This is all muscle um, here. Uh, when part of the heart muscle doesn't get the blood it needs. If the heart muscle needs oxygen, and oxygen is delivered by through blood and if the blood doesn't get to that part of the heart muscle then that part of the heart muscle dies and that is called a heart attack the blood is delivered through these big blood vessels here they're not big they're sort of relatively small but these red blood vessels here so you see we've got these heart arteries the coronary arteries which supply blood to the muscle that's why this muscle looks all red because it's getting all the oxygen but if i block it here for example then all this area will not get the blood it needs and this could all die all right so that's what a heart attack is so <clears throat> The, the point is that when, so when a person comes to me and says, look, you know, um, what are my chances? I say this to them. I say that, look, you know, if I took everyone in the world's heart arteries out uh, and dissected them and cut them, then I would see one or more of three patterns. There are only really three patterns you would see. Okay. And I've drawn them here. So you would see number one completely normal clean arteries in some people all right so here these are completely lovely smooth heart arteries and that's great news if you have those then you don't need to be worried certainly not in the short term you still have to look after yourself because in the long term after say five years or something you may develop a problem but if you have this scenario then that's really good news then there is a group of patients who have this scenario okay where your arteries are not completely normal you have a little bit of buildup of crud caused by cholesterol etc uh, bits of cholesterol and calcium etc being stuck in the heart arteries but overall there is no substantial narrowing what's a significant or substantial narrowing a substantial narrowing is one where it actually stops blood from getting through uh, when the heart needs it most all right uh, so a substantial narrowing is if it's more than 70%. If the narrowing is more than 70% of the width of the artery, then that's called a substantial narrowing. Uh, but there doesn't appear to be anything which is causing more than 70% of narrowing in this diagram. So that's those are people who have coronary disease, uh, but they don't have any significant tight narrowings. And then there is a group here who have this hideous situation where there's loads of buildup of cholesterol and plaque etc to the point that actually the blood is um, uh, is uh, uh, blood flow is really restricted all right um, in this set so this is uh, these are those people in whom the blood can just about get through its rest but when the heart is asking for more blood it would really really struggle to get through all right and so if you look at this as a, in this scenario, if you were a car, for example, if, if your heart is the engine of a car, the engine needs fuel, all right? And if there is a problem in the pipe that takes the fuel to the engine, the first time you will notice the problem is when the engine's going very fast, i.e. when the when the driver is driving the car very fast, it's wanting lots of fuel and the fuel can't get in through quick enough. Now in this scenario, okay, because there's no substantial narrowing, the fuel will probably still get through. Okay, so the fuel's probably going to get through even if the car drives quite fast. On this scenario, when the car is trying to drive fast, the fuel won't get through and the engine will start stuttering. All right. So the first thing I say to them, well, is well, if I start testing you, there are only three patterns I'd expect to find. I would either find this or this or this. 
However, it's highly unlikely I'll find this if you have no symptoms of chest discomfort. If you are, if you, because with this scenario, you will get symptoms of chest discomfort brought on by physical exertion, which gets better with rest. All right, and the majority of people who are worried about their hearts, if they have no symptoms, it's highly unlikely that they would have this. Although your immediate thought is, oh, I definitely don't want this. In some ways, this is actually not such a bad thing because it gives you a warning. Okay, If you had this scenario, then generally the patient will come and say, I walk a distance, I've started noticing discomfort in my chest, I stop, the discomfort goes away. Then I walk again, then I start dis developing discomfort in my chest, I stop, the discomfort goes away. You get a warning. All right, But... And, and in that setting, what happens is then the patient will go and see a doctor because, you know, no one will be foolhardy enough just to ignore that if they're finding that they're getting limiting discomfort walking five yards or ten yards. So most people will then go to the hospital and get checked out. They'll have a test called an angiogram. They'll be found to have this. And then they will either have a bypass operation to bypass the narrowing, okay, or they can have a stent put in. Okay, and these are the people you hear about. You hear about these people who say, oh, well, I was getting chest discomfort. They found a 99% narrowing. I had a bypass and the bypass saved my life. All right. But the truth is uh, their life probably wasn't in a huge amount of danger anyway for the simple reason that this was giving them a warning and they would have gotten it checked out anyway. However, it is not infrequent for us to come across people who are otherwise completely well, leading a normal life, and suddenly, bang, out of the blue, a heart attack, uh, or out of the blue, they die suddenly because of a heart attack. Okay, They can't possibly have this scenario going on if they were completely well with no symptoms. The reason is because this, by its very nature, would cause symptoms. All right. So what is the mechanism in those patients who have sudden heart attacks without any warning? It can't be this, we know it's not this, so it has to be this scenario. Now you may ask, well, this how, why, is, why would this cause a heart attack? Because it's actually not stopping blood from getting through in any way. And the answer is that we're increasingly beginning to realize that these sudden heart attacks happen in these patients where there is no warning because there's no narrowing causing a restriction in blood supply when the heart needs it. So the patient functions fine, but, some of these plaques here can be unstable. So what can happen is sometimes a little bit of this plaque could break off. Okay, And when it breaks off, suddenly the body thinks that you've sustained a wound here. All right, And suddenly, within a matter of seconds, the body decides to form a blood clot to block this wound. And that blood clot inadvertently, within a matter of minutes, will cause a blockage. And that is why, that is how people who have sudden heart attacks without warning have, have their heart attacks. A small part breaks off and suddenly the, the body thinks you've sustained a wound and tries to form a blood clot to stop that wound, but inadvertently the blood clot will block off the blood vessel. And this is the mechanism of those sudden heart attacks that happen without warning. The question is, what do you do about it? Because remember, if you want to, if you're going to do the test to try and find out which of these you are, then you have to say, well, what are you going to do about it when if if I find if I find this? And the answer is, what you do about it depends on what causes bits to break off. Firstly, we are not equipped with the technologies at at this point in time to reliably work out. Which bit could break off? Is it going to be the bit here? Is it going to be this one that's going to break off? Is it going to be this one that's going to break off? So you cannot target any treatment towards one point because you don't know which one is the one that's going to misbehave. And therefore, any so there, so first, so therefore, you have to try and work out well, why do they break off in the first place and what can you do about them? And the answer is that the majority, when this happens, break off largely because of. Um, <clears throat> four reasons. One, age. The older you are, the more likely bits are to break off, obviously. Genetics. If you've got particularly bad genetics and you form these unstable, lots of unstable plaques, then that's more likely. Luck. It can be pure bad luck. And finally, it can be lifestyle. And in terms of lifestyle, what 
are the things that can cause these to break off? Well, inflammation. Inflammation because of poor nutrition, lots of processed foods, uh, bad foods, um, <clears throat> you know, so poor nutrition. Number two, uh, smoking can do this. So whilst most people think, oh, if I smoke for a long time, it causes this, the truth is smoking can also cause a stable plug to become unstable and uh, break off. Um, number three, stress by far, really, really important. Stress, mental stress, physical stress from an intercurrent infection, chronic inflammatory conditions, things like di you know, diabetes, uh, you know, rheumatoid, those kind of things. And then finally, lack of sleep, bad sleep patterns, all hugely inflammatory. And also unaccustomed exercise. Unaccustomed exercise, you know, sudden, someone is sedentary, suddenly starts doing a ton of exercise all of a sudden without allowing yourself to build up gradually. Those are the kind of things that can cause plaques to break off. What can you do about them? Well, you minimize inflammation. That's all you can do about it, okay? Because you don't know which one's going to break. So you can't gear treatment to it. Are there any treatments that work to stop plaques from uh, from breaking off? Well, there's only one, and I'll talk you through it. But largely, it's about lifestyle. Changing your lifestyle stabilizes these plaques. By stabilizing the plaques, it makes it less likely for a bit to break off. Okay, what are the anti-inflammatory things you can do? Number one, by far, get regular exercise, but gradual regular exercise, not unaccustomed, sudden, you know, not, you've not done anything for 20 years and then suddenly decide to start pumping 100 kilos over your head. That's wrong. But if you start doing gradual exercise, going on the treadmill, running, rowing, cycling, building up, exercise is hugely anti-inflammatory and will stabilize these plugs and reduce the risk of them um, breaking. Number two, diet, avoiding processed foods is really important. Reducing your portion size is really important. Uh, number three, avoiding smoking is really important. But four, avoiding stress if you can. You know, we live in a world which is just full of stress, but if you can minimize your stress, then that's really important. And finally, good sleep good sleep patterns and making sure that you're getting good quality sleep is really important. In terms of medication, the only real medication out there which can stabilize plaques is statins, okay, cholesterol-lowering tablets called statins, and particularly just statins, not any cholesterol-lowering tablet. And that's why cholesterol-lowering tablets are prescribed, not because they lower cholesterol, but actually they stabilize these plaques. But to my mind, it's all about lifestyle. And therefore, I say to people, well, yes, you can have the test, but what do you do with it? Well, you're clearly not this because you don't have any symptoms, so you're going to be here or here. And if you were here, all you would be able to do is, all you should, all you will need to do is manage your lifestyle and modify your lifestyle and try and get into good, you know, good um, habits with regards to diet, nutrition, uh, sleep, stress, etc. Uh, so that's all you can do anyway. So is there any merit in trying to find out? Uh, because no matter where you are, it's just really important to lead a good lifestyle anyway. You don't need to find out about this to start changing your lifestyle. And in some ways, if you find out about this and if you were an anxious person, you could get paranoid about it. And that's why whenever someone comes to me speaking and wants to speak to me about what their risks are because they have a family history, this is what I tell them. I say, well, yes, you know, these are the scenarios you could have, but actually this is the one you want to worry about. And what do you do about it? Modify your lifestyle, reduce inflammation, good nutrition, good exercise, good rest, and a good mindset with minimal stress are the best things you can do to reduce your risk of having heart attacks. Okay, so I hope this was useful. Um, my name is Sanjay Gupta, of course, um, as you know. Um, and my website, let me write it down now that I have a board. <laughs> um, let's see, let me just do this. York Cardiology. You may think you might not read my writing, but actually... 
www.yourcardiology.co.uk. That didn't work because it's the other way around. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope this was useful. Um, I really, really appreciate all your comments. Thank you so much. Thank you for the love you show me. Um, and I'll try and keep putting videos out for you. Uh, it's Vivian, my friend Vivian's birthday, and I just wanted to wish Vivian a very happy birthday. Vivian, you know who you are. Thank you so much for all the nice things you say about me. Thank you. Uh, my uh, website is www.yourcardiology.co.uk. My Facebook page you can get through by yourcardiology at gmail.com. Um, my email address is yourcardiology at gmail.com. Uh, my Twitter handle is Your Cardiology. If you like this channel, please consider subscribing. Please consider telling your friends about it. Uh, they may find it interesting, or I might just bore them to sleep. Uh, but sleep is great, as we've discussed. Sleep reduces, Good sleep reduces your risk of having heart attacks, for sure. So thank you so much. All the best.